My name is Kevin McCulloch and I'm uh, Head of Campaigns at the Fair Trade Foundation. I'm here today to celebrate with all the volunteers in Bristol the 10th anniversary birthday of uh, Bristol becoming a fair trade city. So it's fantastic to be here with everyone um, and had a fantastic night uh, celebrating uh, its birthday. What fair trade means is simple. Fair trade is a fair deal for farmers and the Fair Trade Foundation works with 1.5 million farmers in 74 developing countries in Africa, Asia and Latin America, all who benefit from the purchase of fairly traded products. The, the reason I got into fair trade was because Fair trade works with farmers, producers and workers and empowers them to take control of more of the supply chain and essentially to uh, change uh, business practices to make it more ethical. My favourite uh, fair trade product uh, will be of no surprise, it's divine chocolate. In fact, anything divine chocolate is wonderful. As well as, of course, close second is Cafe Direct. I love Cafe Direct coffee. People can find out more about Fair Trade on the Fair Trade Foundation website. Just put it in there to your search engine, Fair Trade Foundation, and that will come loads of information about our products, about campaigns, about all the producer groups around the world. It's all there, Fair Trade Foundation. Uh, my name is Roger James, and uh, I'm here today to support Fair Trade, to celebrate 10 years of Fair Trade in Bristol. And I used to work for Oxfam until recently, and, and as an organisation, a development organisation working across the world. And we support fair trade and we're innovators in many ways. And so fair trade is fantastic, actually gives a lot of people a living that, where they otherwise wouldn't have achieved one, selling the products like coffee or tea or you know, sugar, whatever, that it actually were very poorly and unfairly priced over, over many years. And fair trade gives a real means of support and changing lives, helping people get water, helping people get health care, people get education for their children. So it's made a fantastic difference to the lives of hundreds of farmers across the world. And I think it's, in terms of other causes I support, I mean I'm very strong on environmental issues and, and, and fair trade is also very support, you know, supportive of environmental issues as well. But I think is this a crucial one, it actually directly connects consumers in this country with producers in poorer countries. So it's a direct people connection and people can actually go into a shop, buy a fair trade product, they know that someone is actually getting a better living because of the consumer actions they've taken. My favourite favourite fair trade product, I think probably bananas actually, because bananas are a massive seller, they're the favourite fruit of this country, and you can get a huge amount of fair trade bananas, and you know they are really good to eat, you can do lots of stuff with them. Um, in terms of mad things we've done for fair trade, I'm trying to think, we've done all sorts of wacky things really, posed with giant bananas, dressed as fruit, or whatever. Um, we've actually gone around and, uh, I don't know, chased people down the street with uh, fair trade animals and all sorts of wacky things we've done just to raise awareness of fair trade. But certainly, you know, I think it's very good. We've been on, you know, done lots of, lots of work on the street, talking to ordinary people, talking in churches, talking in halls, talking in big arenas and supporting fair trade amongst students, older people, younger people. So lots of fantastic ways to support fair trade and I've been proud and you know, delighted to be involved in it over the years. My name's Elaine Ashley and I'm a fair trade ambassador, which basically means I'm someone in Bristol that just really supports fair trade and gives as much of my time as I can as a volunteer to promoting fair trade in Bristol. I support fair trade because I just believe really strongly that trade and getting our trading systems right is the key to addressing issues of inequality and poverty in all aspects of life, in all parts of the world. And fair trade makes just such fantastic sense. It's such a good model. Um, it's different to other causes because of it addresses those key roots. It's not. It's it's getting to the core of how humans operate. We always trade with each other. We always have, and it's just trying to get that trade equitable. So, you give something in exchange to someone for something that you want, and they can live their life well and you can live their life well and the core to me when I look at these areas where trade doesn't work well is children not getting educated if children don't get educated how can they change the world so that that's the core of it for me I think really children getting educated my favorite fair trade product 
there's got to be wine. I've got to be honest, a nice bottle of red wine. <laughs> Most people say chocolate, but I'd go for the wine every time. <laughs> the maddest thing I've done to raise awareness of fair trade. There's got to be certainly, eventually, after years and years of resisting, dressing up as a banana a few weeks ago outside Asda. And it worked. It got the attention of lots of people. Lots of children said to their parents, look at that lady dressed as a banana. (laughs) And they had to come up and talk and find out what it was about. And we talked to them about the difference that um, buying fair trade bananas makes to the producers of bananas. So that was worthwhile. It was worthwhile embarrassing myself as a fair trade banana. I'm the Lord Mayor of Bristol. My name is Councillor Alastair Watson and I'm Lord Mayor for 2014-15. And it's been an absolute delight to be hosting the 10th anniversary of uh, our being a fair trade city. Uh, it's a great role that we've had doing that and uh, I'm so pleased and proud that our city has been able to keep that designation for 10 years and I'm sure we'll keep it for another 10 years. I think it's extremely important to Bristol uh, because it's part of what we are. We are, of course, the European Green Capital this year as well. And it's all part of the sustainability of cities worldwide and the trade that we uh, have with other cities. Bristol is a trading city and uh, it's really good that we are one of the, the leading cities in the fair trade movement. And I'm very, very pleased to be a citizen of this city and to live in a city that, that you, has those values and uh, that does what I think is uh, helping the world to become a fairer place. with Bristol Fair Trade Network at some point over the last 10 years. So it's all of our celebration this evening. So it's very fitting that we are all in here together. Um, We're very, very lucky this evening that uh, we've been hosted by um, the University of Bristol in this beautiful room, which those of you who are Sherlock fans will know is where John Watson got married. So um, yes, a little bit of trivia there. Beautiful location for our anniversary. So thank you so much to the University for having us here. Um, Unfortunately, George Ferguson, Mayor of Bristol, is not able to host our event this evening um, because, unfortunately, he is um, out of the city at the moment. So he sent us a message of support, which I'd like to begin by reading out. I am very sorry I cannot celebrate with you today and mark such a significant milestone for Bristol. Ten years as a fair trade city is a proud achievement and it is thanks to many of you here today, our pioneers in sustainable living, that we are European Green Capital this year. Trading fairly is essential to alleviating world poverty and achieving global equality, and I'm extremely proud of Bristol's international reputation for fair trade campaigning. Let's use this year as an opportunity to show other cities and citizens how ethical and sustainable living can play a core role in solving some of the biggest challenges of our time. We need to think about the effect we are having on each other, as we all have a part to play in securing the well-being of our neighbours, wider communities and the natural world. Fair trading is about economic, social and environmental change. So thank you to George Ferguson for his words. <coughs> but I would particularly like to thank the Right Honourable the Lord Mayor of Bristol, Alastair Watson, who has kindly stepped up to host our celebration tonight. Please Hello. welcome him. Thank you, Jenny, and uh, it's very nice to be here, even though I am the B-list <laughs> So, uh, yes, uh, as, uh, as always, George Ferguson's our safety and sort of made most of the, the remarks that I was going to make anyway. So, uh, uh, but it is really, really nice to be here and to welcome you all to this celebration of 10 years of Bristol being a fair trade city. Um, I'd, all, I'd just first like to, to thank sort of Fair Trade Bristol for organising this event uh, and also the Bristol University for uh, hosting it here. But I'd also like to uh, thank Jenny Foster for all her hard work. <laughs> but also all, all of you for being involved over those 10 years and probably 
And before those 10 years, I've just been uh, speaking to Richard and Roger, and they were there at the beginning. I'm sure some of the rest of you were. And, uh, you know, I'm sure, you know, before 2005, there was a lot of hard work going on with uh, a lot of volunteers and people putting their time in. So it is really uh, humbling to be here with you, and uh, thank you very much for all that time and effort you put in before and uh, during the 10 years that we've been a uh, fair trade city. Um, I note on the website that uh, we, were, uh, we became a fair trade city on the 4th of March 2005, so we're not quite on 10 years yet, is that <laughs> <laughs> I did look it up on Google just to make sure. Uh, yeah, so, but I'm, I'm sure we will uh, keep the, uh, the designation until the 4th of March, and it's only a couple of uh, weeks away. So, um, I mean, one of the things that I did note as well um, on the website was that one of the um, five things that you have to do to become a uh, fair trade city is that you have to get the backing of full council. Uh, and it, it is, uh, I'm proud to think that the fellow councillors at that time did vote through and uh, we did vote as a, as a city council. Um, so, you know, being a council, I'm very pleased that that happened and that uh, that was sort of uh, first thing that uh, that happened to bring us into being a, a fair trade city. So the council hopefully has also uh, played its part over the 10 years as well. And as I represent Bristol this year as first citizen, uh, I also represent the Bristol City Council as well, so I'm pleased to note that. Um, so what a great year 2015 is, is, is turning out to be. You know, we are 10 years a fair trade city. Um, the, uh, we are the European Green Capital this year, of course, and Sean the Sheep movies come out, so it's fantastic. <laughs> I, mean, I think the thing about Green Capital, though, is that, of course, it's, it's not just about climate change and those sort of big environmental matters, it's also about sustainability. And, uh, and that sustainability on the sort of local level, um, which uh, we're very good at in Bristol, and, even things like the Bristol Pound is fantastic for our economy. It helps to recirculate things uh, within our own economy and do the sustainable things and buying local food and all the rest. But it is also about uh, sort of global sustainability, and I think that's where fair trade comes in. And I know that uh, Green Capital is sort of working with fair trade and that you're all part of, of what's going on in Green Capital this year, which is absolutely wonderful. Because I think that... And we all know that, that you know, when, when there is poverty and stability around, it's going to affect us all eventually, and it will affect the environment as well. So you know, the more we can do for fair trade, the better uh, sustainability will be in the future, uh, and also make uh, the world a better place to be. So you know, it's great that Green Campbell's around. I, I understand you're hosting the International uh, Fair Trade Towns Conference this year which is absolutely amazing, bringing all those people to Bristol. Uh, I understand it's international as well as, well as national, which is really great uh, in this year of, of being Green Capital. So that, that's a wonderful major event. And I know that uh, Green Capital are also kind of bringing it within the brand as well. So uh, that's, that's really great news. I was trying to work out how I could put into this little sort of introduction the Shaw the Sheep bit, and I'm not really sure where that comes in fair trade. I'm sure some of you might have some good ideas. <laughs> but, uh, but one of the things, of course, we're doing this year, I've, I've, I have to say, I've been at four um, uh, Chinese New Year's already, you know, celebrations. I've got one more to go now, it's only, only five. But, uh, of course, it's the year of the sheep. Wow. Um, so it's the year of the sheep. So, so, so I'm kind of always talking about Sean the Sheep and our lovely Sean the Sheep Trail. So perhaps it will, it will um, bring people into Bristol and we'll be able to share our values and, and teach people and talk to people about sustainability and fair trade. And perhaps that will, will help when they, they go back to their own towns and cities. So maybe that's about the best I can do with good old Sean the Sheep. Um, so, you know, finally, really, I mean, I'm just here to say that, you know, as, as the first citizen of Bristol, as, as sort of, um, you know, my role um, for Bristol, the city and county of Bristol, but we're very proud as a city to reach this anniversary. Um, apparently only four other cities have been able to hold this status continuously over the last ten years. So it is a really, really good thing for Bristol and uh, quite an achievement for our city, which we're very proud of. 
but also as a resident of Bristol living here, I'm also proud that, uh, that we do this and that I can um, go to many of the shops, many of the businesses in Bristol and know that um, you know, they are fair trade, that they're doing their best for some of the poorer countries and nations of this world. So it's, uh, it's truly uh, a wonderful um, anniversary for us. I'm very pleased to be here. Even though I'm only your big lister, um, <laughs> I, will, uh, very, um, I will be delighted to, to be here and, and, and I will remember it. So it is very nice to be here to be able to do that. I must um, just introduce a few of the, the people who are coming up. And uh, I mean, we have um, uh, An Angela, Angela Zelia. 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 Sorry. <laughs> Very welcome, great warm welcome to you from Bristol. Uh, uh, Angela is, is from uh, Nicaragua. Uh, I think this is this is marvellous that, uh, and I understand you, you do this quite often, is, is actually um, bring people who are at the other side of the fair trade um, uh, link. And that is the, the, the countries where um, trading fairly has made a real difference to their lives. So we're looking forward to hearing what, what you have to say. Um, I understand you're a producer from the Sopex Cooperative, and uh, uh, you're here for um, courtesy of the Bristol link that we have with Nicaragua. Of course, we are twinned with Nicaragua, or one of the cities, uh, Porto Marapoizan as well. So it's very nice to have you here this, this, uh, this afternoon. Um, we also have Kevin McCulloch, very nice to see you. Campaigns Manager at the Fair Trade Foundation in London, and you'll be talking to us uh, very shortly as well. Um, Kerry McCarthy, has she arrived yet? No, RM, right. Member of Parliament? No? Uh, okay. Um, she was supposed to be here as well. These politicians, you know, they just... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, they say they'll turn up and they get other things. Probably out there campaigning. Anyway, uh, maybe Kerry will, will turn up as well, and she's a great supporter of Fair Trade, so it'd be very nice to see her if she does. Um, so really, that's that's enough for me. Um, I think next on on the the agenda is um, uh, Angela. 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 Um, she will have an interpreter with her, so I, I will pass over to you. And it's very nice to have you here. Thank you very much. Soy productora de café y cacao, vengo de la cooperativa Jesús Rivera de Nicaragua, del departamento de Ginotega. Hello, my name is Angela Soraya. I am a farmer. I produce coffee and cocoa. I am from Nicaragua, from the Ginotega region. In the map, we can observe the Department of Ginotega. It is located in Nicaragua, and to the north, the Cuá, the municipio where I come from. On the map, we can see where I'm from. You can see Nicaragua, which is my department, where I'm from. And to the north of that, you have Clark, which is my hometown. Ellas son mi familia, mi hija Yohaira, de 11 años, y Ariana, de 1 año. Here you can see my daughters. Here we have Aria, who is 11 years old, and Ariana, who is 1 year old. Ahí podemos observar mi casa, parte del patio de mi casa, las gallinas, bananos, café. Here you can see my house. Uh, this is my house here. 
here is just part of my garden patio, and there you can see some chickens, you can see some banana trees, and some coffee plants. Ella es mi mamá, una familia muy grande. Somos 15 hijos, dos muertos, 10 varones y 3 mujeres. So this is my mum. We're a rather a large family. There are 50, 50, from 15 siblings, uh, two of whom are dead. There are 10 men and three girls. Aquí podemos observar una planta de café que le entró una enfermedad hace dos años que se llama este, la antranosis o roya. Uh, este café ha tenido que ser todo arrancado para sembrar nuevas plantas. So here we can see a coffee plant, and we can see this coffee plant actually has a disease. The disease is called la roya. Uh, it's has, it was had this disease for about two years. So what we actually had to do was that we had to totally rip it out again and then plant a new one. Aquí ya tenemos nuevas plantaciones con ayudas de comercio justo. And here we're planting new plants, and we can do this thanks to fair trade. Y aquí podemos observar en el mapa los precios que se han mantenido del café y cómo ha venido bajando el café. And here on the map, we can see the, the price quotes for coffee, and we can just see how it's been affected over the course of time. Y aquí podemos observar, eh, aquí están las plantaciones de mi cacao. Hemos venido diversificando las la fincas por los cambios climáticos y porque el cacao los va a, a dar más ayuda en la economía. So here we can see some of my cocoa plants here. We've actually had to diversify our produce on the farm, partly due to climate change, but also partly because we want to have something else which would be more useful in the economy. Aquí tenemos los precios del cacao. Si pueden observar, son más estables. Here we can see the price for cocoa. And if you can see now, the well, you see they oscillate up and down, but now they're a bit more stable. Y en esta foto podemos observar plantas entre medios del café para retener los suelos que no se deslaven mucho. Esto tiene que ver con los cambios climáticos. And here we can see some, uh, we can see some cocoa plants. Uh, basically, we plant them so that they keep the soil together because with climate change, the soil gets weaker. Estas son algunas escuelas que se ven en las comunidades. Uh, han venido mejorando con los premios de comercio justo y también se pueden observar los caminos que no son de muy buenas condiciones. So here we can see some of the schools in the community and we, could, uh, we can see that the fair trade premium has really helped these schools, but what we can also see is that the paths are in pretty bad states. Aquí podemos observar a un doctor eh, con los premios de comercio justo se ayuda mucho a la salud y se previene lo del cáncer. Eh, se atienden a más de 20 familias y más de 20 mil mujeres y a 4 mil hombres de la próstata. So we can see a doctor here, and thanks to the fair trade premium, he is helping people with their health, and he helps more than 20 families. Uh, he's helped more than 20,000 women and, and about 4,000 men. Aquí encontramos Esta foto es de, del centro de acopio de mi cooperativa, donde se acopia el café y el cacao. So here in this photo, we can see the center, which is my cooperative where, where we work, and this is where we where we're talking about producing cocoa and coffee. 
y aquí encontramos el logotipo de Comercio Justo. Cuando vayan al súper siempre compren con esta etiqueta y van a ayudar a muchas mujeres como Ángela. So here is a fair trade logo. So I really urge you, whenever you go to the supermarket, please look out for this logo because when you buy when you buy this, you're really helping women just like me. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias to Angela and also to Emily who is interpreting for her. Um, obviously, people like myself and Kevin, we stand up and talk about fair trade, but actually to hear it from somebody who's being directly impacted is just much more important and more powerful. Um, just to get back to you, Lord Mayor, on your link between Sean the Sheep and fair trade, there will be a fair trade Easter egg in stores for Easter um, with Sean the Sheep. So there you are. There's your link. <laughs> I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> so there's always a link somewhere with fair trade. There we have it. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to take you on a very whistle top, whistle stop tour now through 10 years of Bristol Fair Trade. So hold on to your hats. Here we go. Back in 2003, when the Prime Minister was Blair, a group of Bristol, Bristol citizens decided the city should be fair. It didn't take them long, but to everyone's elation, in 2005 we gained Fair Trade City status from the Fair Trade Foundation. We held a grand launch aboard the SS Great Britain. I was cooking breakfast as a volunteer in the galley kitchen. Now on note, this is the first appearance of our key campaigning tool. Sporting a giant inflatable banana always looks cool. Here's our certificate to prove we met the criteria of a fair trade city, a steering group, a council commitment, and fair trade activity across the community. And here's our first fair trade directory to tell people where to see the few places in the city they could buy fair trade chocolates and coffee. Bristol was one of the key cities in 2007 to commemorate 200 years since slavery was abolished, not a day too late. And fair trade was seen as an important way to overcome <coughs> slavery today. So we were granted funding for our work. The coordinator was born, and still, still here I am, not too weary and worn. <laughs> In fact, I'm still as inspired as the day that I started. Seeing how fair trade changes lives still gets me excited. And it's not bad when you get to meet some great people now and then, such as our fair trade producers and DFID minister, Hilary Benn. So how did our campaigning make its name from then on? We took three key directions, schools, businesses, and cotton. Cotton was the only fair trade product seeing decreasing sales and we didn't want fair trade cotton to fail. Cheap clothing was bad for all supply chain workers, so we wanted to show that ethical was better than cheap offers. Our first fair wear fashion show was the largest in the world. Douglas Alexander came, I'm sure not just to see the girls. We partnered with fashion design students from Fulton College in Newey to engage young people in the issues and hope they would change the industry. Bristol Cathedral was an awesome backdrop for our fashion shows. I'm proud to say 400, 450 people watched in 2009, 700 in 2010, and we had to send some people away. We previewed the Emma Watson collection for People Tree, a great coup for ethical fashion, and outside London for once, yippee. In 2011, we took the show to the Broadway Mall to reach a new audience of shoppers with the fair trade call. Over 1,500 people crammed in to see the three shows. And Miss Bristol had a fair trade wedding dress in which to pose. In 2013 and 14, we transferred our shows to City Hall as the gala event for Big Green Week, a fabulous ball. <coughs> Mayor George brought the European Green Capital Award to the ball. And partnering with Fair Share Southwest, provided a truly ethical feast for all. All our shows had an incredible team of partners and volunteers. We've had over 500 people involved over the years. Now onto business, another main focus of our work. 
In 2012, we held the very first Fair Trade Business Awards in the world. Our host was George Alagaya, an inspirational man from the BBC. He explained that much of the conflict he's seen is caused by poverty. By paying people fairly and bringing hope instead of despair, there's always a, so another course instead of war, as life is more positive and fair. Levi Roots was our host in 2013. He told us of the fair trade cocoa farmers he'd seen. As a chef, he chooses the best ingredients he can, and with fair trade, quality and ethics go hand in hand. We have 46 entrants from across the Southwest. The awards encourage businesses to do more to be the best. And by 2014, the impacts were clear. We've seen improvements in applications year on year. We're delighted that this year, 77 businesses have applied, double the number from when we first tried. Ah, there's that banana again. Next to Lucy Siegel when she presented the awards that year. I did warn you it would focus in our events throughout the years. And now we come to the cream of our campaigning tools. Yes, even better than the banana. Bristol has been blessed by its partnership with Bristol Link with Nicaragua. One of the biggest thrills of this job is to meet each year wonderful fair trade women farmers who speak at our events without fear. I'm going to whiz through the producers we've had since the start and thank Angela for being a part of a long line of producers to brave the British winter and food to help us learn more about fair trade and the difference that it makes to you. Now you've probably had enough of listening to me, so you'll be pleased to know that you're about to see a video message from one of the incredible women who have enriched our fair trade campaigning in Bristol since 2002. So I do hope this video will play. Okay, Sandra, take it away. Hola, soy Sandra Rojegui, soy productora de sésamo, vivo en Nicaragua. Tuve la oportunidad en el año 2012 y del 21 de febrero al 12 de marzo de estar en Bristol. Participé en la actividad de comercio justo que se hace por allá y también en la celebración del Día Internacional de la Mujer. Realmente pude darme cuenta de la gran labor que hacen muchos grupos de voluntarios diferentes partes del mundo, especialmente yo que viví la experiencia en Brito, en Inglaterra, de ver cuánta gente se dispone para apoyar a miles de productores, a miles de familias pobres, campesinas, con el hecho de comprar parte de su producción y venderlo eh, en estas cosas que hacen en estas actividades de comercio mundo, que son las que permiten generar un poco más de valor al producto que nosotros sacamos de la tierra y con esto poder ir mejorando nuestras condiciones de vida. Yo empecé en mi caso específico, he tenido la oportunidad de ir preparando a mi hijo, ya está en segundo año de, de secundario, razón por la cual de todo corazón yo les agradezco infinitamente todo lo, el esfuerzo que hacen y millones de felicidades por estar cumpliendo 10 años de estar en comercio justo a personas especiales como Alice, Jenny Foster, que son miembros del Comité de Comercio Justo por allá, hay un grupo voluntario que siempre se disponen a apoyar a las personas que visitan Bristol, eh, por ejemplo, Jonathan y su esposa Jill, mis padres sustitutos, los quiero de verdad, a Janet Vigi, a Ruth Pedra, eh, a todo aquel grupo de traductores que siempre estuvieron muy dispuestos a apoyar, por ejemplo, Marcos, eh, Nick Reagan, Petra, eh, Ana Sayer y otros más. Tuve la oportunidad de compartir con ocho o diez compañeros que estuvieron acompañándome con traductores. Por eso, una vez más reitero, mi un millón de felicitaciones por estos diez años que van a cumplir de estar trabajando en comercio juntos. Sigan adelante sigan apoyando a muchas familias más, que todo el esfuerzo, todo el esfuerzo que ustedes hacen es bien aprovechado en, en todos los países a donde llega ese, ese granito de arena que ustedes ponen. Una vez más, muchas felicidades en su décimo aniversario. Fair trade, sigan adelante.
Part two. <laughs> Then the final priority for our fair trade campaigning has to be working with schools across the city. Children and young people really get the whole concept of that's not fair and want to do something to show they care. From holding that banana at our launch event with us to gaining fair trade school status. Young people have been involved in running fair trade stores to creating beautiful art walls. This incredible work of art was on display for four years in the Central Library. We've also held a series of fair trade conferences for schools to engage children with the injustice of trade rules, <laughs> to make things fair and use their voice, and know that each of them has a choice. 450 children used their voices in a spectacular way, singing at a concert at the Colston Hall in 2008. 14 schools formed the Fanfare for Fair Trade Choir, singing for a better world. The huge audience were inspired. Thousands of Bristol children have met our fair trade producers, taken part in workshops and planned for a better future. A second Fair Trade Schools Conference in 2010, held at UWE, there's the banana again, Young people at the Malcolm X Centre pledged on Ujima Radio to put people before money. And Bristol Cathedral Choir School pupils made fudge and cakes from Agatha's Fair Trade Honey. Our last Fair Trade Schools conference, with obligatory banana in evidence, included a live link up with a Fair Trade School uniform factory in India, no less. Now, Bristol Fair Trade hasn't just stayed in the city mind. Our campaigners have been part of the Fair Trade Towns movement far and wide. I was deeply honoured to be the keynote speaker at the inaugural National Czech Fair Trade Conference, where I could share the Bristol model. So many accolades, so little time, but wonderful to show that other countries look to us for Fair Trade campaigns advice, as we're in the know. Even in Japan, Fair Trade campaigners know Bristol well. This is the formal invitation at last year's International Fair Trade Towns Conference to come this year to Bristol. The bananas are getting bigger, but we're nearly at the end of my appalling rhymes. Just a few more highlights to share before I've had my time. Bristol was one of only four fair trade towns to be invited to the do for the 15th anniversary of the fair trade market Downing Street by Taku. We've also picked up a few awards along the way including in 2011 for Best Fair Trade Fortnight campaign. Then Runners-Up Award, two years later on, you can see that nationally we've shone. Partnership has been a key to much of our campaigning success. So many great organisations make Bristol the best. Joint events have had the most impact, such as Make Your Money Count, helping people make the links between different ethical issues on the ground. We've also stressed the impacts of fair trade that are less well known. By hosting International Women's Day events, we've shown the positive impacts that fair trade has on the lives of women and girls, as well as how women across the world face many of the same problems and concerns. Our Mayor was the first to sign in the UK to sign up to the Fair Trade Post-2015 Declaration for the EU. And the banana even made it into the M-Shed display. To be part of the You Make Bristol exhibition really made my day. To know that the people of Bristol voted fair trade a vital part of our city life, with ethics at its heart. And now we have a panel in the airport arrivals hall. So our fair trade city credentials are on display for all. I can't end this presentation without a huge shout out and thank you to all our volunteers we could not have done this without you. We've trained teams of fair trade ambassadors to help with it all. They've waited tables, led workshops, and stood on countless fair trade stalls. So what next for Bristol Fair Trade, I hear you cry? Well, there's so much more to do, we'll continue to try. A survey we carried out last year showed wide support for fair trade, but we won't stop until those figures read 100%. So watch this space. We're proud to be a partner organisation for Bristol 2015 by showing that fair trade is a key part of being green. True sustainability means economic, social and environmentally. 
And fair trade, of course, is all three. There's plenty going on this year for fair trade fortnight. The fair trade mark won't be out of your sight. The business awards are bigger than ever this year. Not one host, but two. Artman animations and divine chocolate. Plenty to look forward to. International Women's Day will be celebrated in style, with women's football teams and music and Angela as the highlight. Beyond that, we never rest on our laurels. We have plans for World Fair Trade Day, a Food Connections gala dinner with Casimir and Allegra and McKenna Day. Don't miss it. And then, the biggie, the most exciting venture yet, hosting the International Fair Trade Towns Conference in Bristol. We're all set. A global event in the Green Capital Program, Fair Trade for Sustainability, a fitting theme. So here's a taster of what we will do. And sorry, the banana is in there too. <laughs> has come a long way in the 20 years since the fair trademark first appeared on our shelves. And now most people know something about fair trade. Fair trade is a way of buying a product where you can guarantee that the farmer will have been given a fair price. But as well as fair prices, social premiums for community investment and good working conditions, fewer people are aware that fair trade is also good for the environment. Did you know, for example, that fair trade as an organisation helps producers achieve certain environmental standards as a requirement before achieving certification? So, how green is fair trade? Well, a truly sustainable solution has to be socially, economically and environmentally sensitive. And fair trade is all of these. to do. We say, when something needs to be done, 
go to Bristol to see how it's done best. That's what we say. Or, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Or put simply, if we don't know, bring up Jenny and ask Jenny. That's actually what we do to be able to with you. Um, it is true, we do look to Bristol to see how to do fair trade best. And I'm not like as one of those new pop groups who, when they go to Newcastle, Belfast, Cardiff, or uh, for that matter, Manchester, and they say, you're the best. No, no, you guys are the best. And you, you need to give yourself an applause for that because you are the best. or in videos or otherwise. Actually, that's the evidence there. You saw it tonight, that is the evidence. And that is the evidence, actually, of each and every one of you here tonight and those not present, past and present, who've been involved in, the, in making Bristol the fair trade city that it is and in becoming 10 years old as a fair trade city. What is not profiled on the websites, or often um, in the films, or other places, are the hundreds of events run by volunteers so tirelessly in local community centres, places of worship, with uniformed youth organisations, youth clubs, shops, schools, council offices, with council workers, local businesses, in leisure centres, local parks, Week in, week out, not just at Fort Fairtrade Fortnight, but actually all year round, there are events and things happening. This is the work that the eyes of the world do not always see, but it's the work that keeps the fair trade movement inspired locally, nationally, but also as you saw globally as well. But more important, more importantly, it acts as a link and a lifeline to the producers, the workers, and the farmers who benefit from the sales of fair trade products and also from your campaigning work on various products each year. This fair trade fortnight, our theme is choosing products that change lives, and changing lives is exactly what they do. Approximately 1.5 million farmers and workers in 74 developing countries in Africa, Asia, and Latin America benefit from the purchase of fair trade products. And for us as consumers, well, we also get something out of it too. Actually, we wouldn't be doing it in one way if we didn't. What do we get? We get to purchase products in line with our values and our principles. Secondly, we are part of a movement, a global movement for change, who over many, many years have worked hard to campaign on issues of trade justice. And thirdly, we also get to buy some fantastic high quality products as well. So choosing products to change lives. I mean, I have with me some of those products very quickly. You all know them, you've seen them. Some new products you might not have seen. Cafe Direct, uh, this one's a new one from uh, Machu Picchu, the area of Machu Picchu, helping coffee farmers there. Um, another one is a new Liberation Nuts. Nuts from Malawi. Brazil, El Salvador, Nicaragua as well, I think. And finally, I have Britain's favourite fair trade product. Anyone know what it is? Chocolate. Which, which particular chocolate? Divine. Divine. Divine which one? No, no, no. It is. <laughs> the truth is, it is divine. And this one is the latest one. You might have seen it. Toffee and sea salt. Absolutely fantastic. So, uh, if you said divine toffee and sea salt, I think it was you, Lord Mayor, wasn't it? There you go. <laughs> Never. So, those are the products that we choose products to change lives, changing the lives of millions of farmers, producers, and workers worldwide.
This year also, if you haven't seen it, please do take the time to see it because it is a fantastic film um, of during fair trade fortnight of tea pickers and farmers in Malawi, and it is it's an amazing film and beautiful in many ways, filmed in a very different way. Uh, so I, I urge you to have a look at that. And last year I visited the tea plantation in Setemwa in Malawi, where I met Charles, 65 years of age and still picking tea. And he shared with me that actually his children, his two children had moved on from picking, picking tea. And he was thankful to fair trade because they were part of that story. And they moved on to, in his words, better things. And he was very proud of the fact that he was a tea picker and the quality, he was very proud of the quality of his tea. And he asked me to share with you today and he said, I want to shake everyone's hand to thank them for their kindness and generosity in choosing to purchase fair trade tea but other fair trade products. And in doing so you are thinking every day as you consume those products of giving farmers, workers and producers a better deal. Sadly, sadly, since the making of that film, which was about two months ago, Malawi has experienced the worst floods in living memory. And unfortunately, hundreds of people have died in the southern region and uh, left 200,000 uh, people displaced and unfortunately too some of our fair trade um, farmers have also been affected some in the tea estates and some also uh, in the sugarcane uh, plantations as well so it just shows you and highlights the fragility of life for many producers each year there are indeed challenges ahead for us as part of the fair trade movement and we need to innovate in order to adapt to those changes. And many of you will know about um, fair trade sourcing programs and our introduction in COCO with a particular uh, launch uh, coming up in, in, in fair trade fortnight. And also our fair trade partnership with Waitrose. That partnership will definitely increase the sales and volumes for farmers and producers worldwide. And finally, new campaigning challenges. We urge you this fair trade fortnight to take part in our um, sugar cane um, petition and we're urging the EU to basically, um, we're urging the EU as part of the sugar protocol which is the Department for International Development has said is going to impact adversely on 200,000 sugar cane farmers' lives as uh, markets have opened up for sugar beets and will flood the market, thus displacing the sugar cane coming from many of our former colonies uh, who have been supplying us with sugar for hundreds of years. So it's a massive thing and un unfortunately in many ways the horse is bolted in this one and we've lost out on this but we are trying to petition uh, the commissioner to ensure that actually uh, some funds are given for diversification and actually that long, a longer time will be given for that diversification process. So that's the campaign. Go online, you'll see a little film about it. Uh, you will see we're encouraging people to contact their MEP and in turn to get their MEP to contact the commissioner. It's an important campaign. As I say, otherwise it will impact on 200,000 sugarcane farmers. And don't forget to, please do choose to purchase uh, cane sugar, fair trade cane sugar, when you are in your supermarkets or shops as well. Finally, it leaves me to say thank you once again for uh, each and every one of you and the part you've played in making Bristol um, a fair trade city. And for this on your 10th anniversary, you are, you are a very famous city worldwide. I received a number of emails and to pass on, only one this morning from the Netherlands. 
So you're known throughout the world. So congratulations on your 10th birthday. Um, thank you, each and every one of you, for everything you have done. Edmund Burke once said, no one made a greater mistake than the person who did nothing because they could only do a little. Actually, you've done more than a little. Tonight is evidence that you've done a lot. Thank you very much, and let's be here for another 10 years as well. Well done. Kevin, we do really appreciate that. Um, I'd like to ask Abby to join me now. Um, some of you won't have met Abby, but she's actually been working with me for the past three months. She's our new fair trade assistant, um, which is absolutely wonderful. She's going to be with us until the end of the International Fair Trade Towns Conference. Um, as you can see from everything that we've achieved, there's absolutely no way the Bristol Fair Trade Network could have achieved all of that with only me as the part-time coordinator. Um, and Abby for the past three months. So we've obviously had an incredible team of dedicated volunteers and we'd like to acknowledge some of them now. We have a wonderful team of fair trade ambassadors, many of whom are here tonight, and we'd like to award a few key people who have done so much for fair trade in Bristol. They don't know this is gonna happen. So, <laughs> so there may be a few shocked faces. Lord Mayor, could I have a call up and Abby will be giving you the certificates. We have to start with Elaine Ashley. Elaine has given one day a fortnight to volunteer for Bristol Fair Trade. She's spoken in schools and at events when I was unavailable, and she's helped to plan for Fair Trade Fortnight and the International Fair Trade Towns Conference. She has also spent hours of her life on Fair Trade stalls and also running the Fair Trade Bar at their fashion events. She's an absolute star and ambassador, and I don't know what I would have done without you. Elaine, thank you so much.
Johnny Wilkinson. <laughs> <laughs> Many of you know that Johnny is my husband. And so it would be very easy to leave him out of doing this because you can just assume that your partner will help out. But I have to say that it would be very wrong because he so deserves an award. He deserves it for being my husband alone, of course, but also for all the things that he's done. He designed and runs our website as a volunteer. He comes to all our key events, usually setting everything up while I'm faffing about in the background. He carries bags, stands behind the stalls, as well as helping design and format materials that the network produces. Johnny, thank you so much. Gained in not so good ways in the past. 
but it's very appropriate and we're a leading fair trade city. But coming back to Jenny, I think Jenny has been an inspiration to lead with, because to lead us all, because volunteers all over the years have done a huge amount of work, but volunteers need someone to work with and inspire them and lead them and, and sort of focus the effort, if you like. And I think Jenny's done a fantastic job in that. And uh, I know Jenny's a sort of part-time actor, I think, at various times, but uh, I didn't actually realize she was a poet as well. So. <laughs> but I just really have to say, Jenny Foster has been, you know, one of the 40 people who made a big difference in Bristol, recognised as such, led us to many awards, and gave taken us to fair trade to a place that I never even really thought that was possible when we sat in a little room in Colston Hall before it was reformed, some pokey corridor, corridors, which I think were made in the 1930s or something. We sat in a little brown room, and we said, Jenny, do you want this job? <laughs> and Jenny took it, thank God for that. And, uh, and I just like to say, when we finished up, I say, Really fantastic congratulations to Jenny. She's led us all to great heights and we never thought it was possible over the years. So thank you, Jenny, and well done all the work you've done over the years.